So I just came in from uh, work in the oil field, um, getting ready to do my laundry, do some things. And Robert Rudnick has written a uh, manifesto. So this is impromptu. Uh, we haven't re rehearsed this. It's the first draft. We're asking for your feedback, uh, constructive criticism and uh, feedback. And I, we know the enemies will come and bring uh, <laughs> uh, destructive criticism. Go ahead. Bring it on. We're asking for your feedback. And here's Robert Rudnick uh, reading, uh, a scruffy old radical, Robert Rudnick reading the first draft of um, manifesto to end the, world abortion. the Manifesto to End World Abortion. Did I say it right? I, I would say aborticide. Aborticide, yeah. aborticide. Okay, okay, just a okay. moment. My name is Robert Rudnick. I'm reading the first draft of Manifesto to End World Aborticide. Okay, <clears throat> after several mass shootings in, in U.S. churches recently, many congregations are considering options around people packing heat during the services and events. Uh, once it dawned on me, that these uh, uh, that this issue also touches other issues. Uh, for one thing, it occurred to me that Christ was completely correct to uh, use the analogy of the bride for for our, the the Christian Church, because since these issues are touching all other issues, and you know, men are like waffles and women are like spaghetti. You know, it really is probably a pretty fitting analogy that there are feminine characteristics to the church, and that's according to His will. Okay, uh, I for one. Uh, Okay, uh, sure, sure. you know, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I will be discussing these, uh, but all Christendom is by doctrine, uh, basically practices gentle and peace-loving life, but not pacifism, seeing that as a heresy. Mo most Christian denominations are like that. The turn-the-other-cheek command of Jesus is seen as a specific command for a specific level of assault, smiting a robust man with a closed fist, you know, as, as you know, you would turn your other cheek uh, as an evangelistic tool, you know. Uh, it is not to be misconstrued as forbidding the use of potentially deadly force where there is fear of imminent death or great bodily harm of yourself or another, and it's not to be rightly applied to national offense, de defense, national defense. So Jesus said, sell your coat and buy a sword. John told repentant soldiers, be content with your pay. 1 Samuel 13 describes a time when Philistia was dominating Israel and disallowing blacksmiths to keep Israel from arming uh, in insurrection. The temple in Jerusalem in Old Testament times was adorned with functioning swords and shields. They were issued by the high priests to overthrow usurping Adaliah. One prophet said, let the weak man say, I am a warrior. St. Paul used the analogy of a soldier dressing in armor for combat when describing the faith walk of a, uh, of a believer, and there is more. I, for one, am convinced that those um, uh, securing, trying to secure churches with concealed carry weapons holders among the congregations are inherently correct at any time because the life of man upon earth is a warfare. And anyone who says politics, religion, and war don't mix betrays personal ignorance on all three topics. We U.S. nationals have art depicting our founding Calvinist separatist pilgrim national forefathers strolling to church on Sunday holding blunderbuss hand cannons. These are just a few Bible and church history examples. Frankly, any church that says you don't get to do this stands in need of that order being ignored and nullified by concealed carry weapons holders. In, uh, in and of itself, because that order is symptomatic of a bunch of pervasive failures, sins, and heresies on the part of modern Christianity, especially in the U.S., where the war for independence times, militia cadres were raised, trained, exhorted, and led by clergy. For example, how could worldwide Christendom sit on their hands while all those Christians got butchered by Reds and later Muslims all over the earth? And then even worse, they go and make missionary hay about uh, martyrdom in their fundraising newsletters. You know, Well, we had lots of practice ignoring that because since as early as 1967, we resolutely refused in the Christian church in the United States to lift a finger to protect preborn babies in our own congregations and even families from surgical aborticide and earlier than that, from pill regimens that have anti-zygote backup mechanisms all while church prohibition against the pill and aborticide 
remained on the books in some denominations. So they were just openly outlawed. So abandoning red Muslim martyred brothers and sisters in far lands wasn't much a stretch after all that. I, for one, am convinced I am now describing a mass heresy, apostasy, syncretism, and Jesus witchcraft in, uh, in the church here with, with this statement. Small wonder, then, that we have totally abandoned the handful of abortion force resistance activists incarcerated in this land. Uh, there is no prison ministry for them. Really. Uh, it's not like prison fellowship doesn't visit them. They don't get any visitors. You know, so, so how did we get here? Incrementally. For generations, U.S. Christians sat on their hands while European Marxist bastards wormed their way into every conceivable area of power and influence in this land. Church, industry, labor, finance, publishing, government, military, and intelligence, entertainment, media, all ended up with influential factions when not totally controlled by the left. Early on, Antonio Gramsci and the Frankfurt School in Europe were advocating family breakdown by immorality to destroy um, social foundations and take over. Their people in all these areas that I've mentioned above were in league with uh, these concepts. The demographic ramifications of this paradigm were lost on none of these usurping operators. We need to briefly mention here that fascist, Nazi, Peronist types are just right-wing socials with the same doctrines and practices around, uh, so, you know, around so-called sexual freedom and aborticide. So there are really no answers there either. It's, it's like socialists with a different shirt. The demographic damage alone of these policies is incalculable and dire. In fact, more than war, famine, pestilence, and genocide, the sexual revolution may be poised to be the nearly extinction-level event of Christendom. In Europe and North America, uh, uh, God always retains a remnant for himself, but that could be very small. You know, What a vile legacy we have left for our precious little choosings. When all this horror runs its course, about, you know, we, at the 11th hour, we can have repentance, of course, but um, with our passive and active collusion, Sub-Saharan Sub Africa will likely be the new world center of Christendom. And they desperately, desperately need to hear that we, they shouldn't repeat our errors because these mass genocidal freaks are pushing their agenda in Africa in a big way, okay? The hour is very late. We have had neurotoxins in the U.S. added to city water for decades to cow us. We passively colluded with endless propaganda from the radio, schools, entertainment uh, for decades. We thought ourselves too pious for the public arena for a long time, basically from the Scopes monkey trials until about the Operation Rescue period. That's the 20s and the 80s. Catholics and Calvinists were excluded from that, by the way. Things have been getting worse for a long time. Aborticide is a century-old worldwide war on all humanity's posterity. It fully deserves, by way of response, an international Christian military crusade to adequately check it. Genocide is a tool of war. War is politics and law by other means. War is one group forcing its will on another group. Moderation in war is an absurdity. War is inevitable. Military philosophers, Clausewitz and Sun Tzu, said all of this. Except Jesus said the last one, that war is inevitable. <clears throat> Sometimes politics and law rise very nearly to a level of war. Sometimes it morphs into physical conflict. Regardless, law, politics, and war still being predominantly male domains, this problem of aborticide is clearly a man's issue. Feminism was dreamed up by the left to have two taxpayers in each home and more years to indoctrinate the children. Feminists adore Marxism. Their worldwide Islamic allies, bankster elites, global will, aborticide, and sodomy give them no quarter. They are opponents who must be resisted and stopped. Moving against aborticide is ultimately global because bankster Marxist doctrines and practices spreading it are global and foundationally genocidal and warlike. Christendom worldwide must reject demographic lies about overpopulation. It's all a bunch of crap. 
it may be too late to save Europe and North America from depopulation ruin. Huge factions there squarely oppose Christendom's life agenda and have so far stubbornly, rebelliously refused to give up abortion and contraception. Oh, but they whine about inevitable Muslim invasion and demographics as a direct result of multi-generational European North American population folly. Globalist banksters, Marxists, and Muslims have been in league for more than a century. I know about the whole enemy of my enemy is my friend thing, but Islam and Marxism are so diametrically opposed on doctrines and practices that for them to be in military geopolitical bed, to me, is strong indication of demonic supernatural unity. I mean, for crying out loud, Zionism has huge Marxist roots. Yet Christendom has been sold a bill of goods by globalist banksters and Marxists too. So it can definitely, you know, you can definitely sell it to a bunch of people that don't have anything in common. With it. So, what? Yeah, because are... in terms in terms of the popular the popular support, you've got more rank and file Christians who are into Zionism in the U.S. than you will find rank and file. Marxist. Mo- uh, Marxist Muslims, yeah, right. yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, the, it's the Saudis and the and yeah. the higher echelon. Yeah, yeah maybe. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what right. are we up against in the U.S. now? Media, publishing, entertainment, many corporations, large factions in the superpower government, immense web services, schools, and apostate churches, a chemically cowed and largely brainwashed, spiritually stubborn and rebellious population, just for starters. Uh, also, globalist bankers, uh, uh, international uh, uh, allies, the Quran, the Korean Peninsula, and Mid East are are both a rifle shot away from ultimate nuclear exchange. Fukushima, the entire Pacific Rim percolating away seismically. Yellowstone, the entire Yellowstone National Park about to go up in the air because it's one great big volcano. Yeah. Are we ripe? For judgment yet? I mean, why doesn't anybody have fear of God in times like these? You know, anybody anxious about all this? Yeah, someone Ma- told me. Sorry to interrupt. No, someone right. told me uh, last week that the fear of God is just a just a healthy respect. Yeah, no, no, no. How about a holy terror? You know, yeah, yeah. I know. It's oh, it's so mad. It's so mad. Well, it, it, you know. That, so we're talking about a lot of strong delusions. Mm-hmm. Too massive and hideous judgment in multiple areas, falling first on the church per writ may be physically inevitable. We can repeat as long, we can repent rather, as long as we are conscious and keep sucking air and still enter into eternity with Christ. But maybe that's all we can save at this point. But pervasive and immense physical judgment to include utter destruction of Europe and North America seems fairly likely with, with, with all of this, you know. Uh, military and intelligence abilities in this area have become very sobering on our absentee watch. I mean, you know, the, the, the superpower, uh, up to one-third of which, you know, is involved in all kinds of pedophile sex trafficking and, and you know, all kinds of their, their ability, their ability to watch everybody on Earth through our phones uh, and robotics, which are smarter than people at this point, spy phones, tiny drones that tap into smartphones to hunt down and eliminate dissidents. They can fill C-130 uh, airplanes with that. It's available to release swarms of them, genetic engineering, weaponized weather and climate, chemtrails, uh, covenantal multi-generational blood guilt curses on all these lands, uh, made coupled by sodomy, birth control and abortion. Not even the world's biggest superpower is a physical match for all the uh, multi-generational covenantal blood guilt curses that seem to be lining up. Uh, nah, but on the other side, uh, having said all that, Jesus did say, without me, you can do nothing. So as vast as these teetering judgments are, in another way, we've always been that helpless, even with little things. We can't even do little things without, without Jesus' you know, intervention and allowance. You know? So, so in, in a sense, it's really huge. In another way, you know, it's, not, it's not too much for him. But we, you know, we're supposed to show the fruits of repentance. You know? But um, not even the world's biggest superpower is a physical match for that, let alone a basket case church. Who is this itty bitty odd we serve in our sad little imagination? None of this is too big for the great I am. How then shall we live? What would true repentance look like? 
So I, for one, am convinced that it will move from individual to family to church, to local to state to nation to world. But, I, you know, I, I'm ultimately, I'm guessing, if God wanted to do it the other way, that would be, you know, that would work great too. I have described almost unimaginable passive and active collusion with the greatest abominable genocide in the history of the world, bar none, for a century. That said, unprecedented brainwashing and mind control, and yes, even uh, prosperity have, have robbed us U.S. Christians of much needed diligence and understanding here. I mean, we have really, you know, we've really, really been in a, in a vat of this stuff, you know, of strong delusion and propaganda, mind control, brainwashing, uh, uh, passive and active collusion that would make it difficult too impossible for us to look at it. Uh, covenantal blood guilt curses. So, but uh, nothing like it in all of history for the scope, you know. Uh, uh, for, you know, it, it's, it's pervasive and evil foundational error. Uh, all these conditions have conspired to lead us to destruction. The hour is, is very late. Christ's vicarious atonement can cover even this level of sin, praise Jesus, but the fruit of this atonement is repentance. I am convinced repentance will look like this. Recognizing and confessing personal culpability for this horror, crawling to the cross, taking this message to the family, and the church, and the city, and the state, and the nation, and the world, step by step, beginning to take extremely seriously the shaping and takeover of governments at all levels, so that we bear not the sword in vain against these abominable evils, all while daily being sexual only to a married partner of the opposite sex, while being open to the children God wants us to have. Moving in a police, military, church, symphonic way to greatly suppress abortion, pornography, birth control, and sodomy. Mm -hmm. We need to remove national and religious blood guilt curses. National repentance must be the number one national security issue. Again, national repentance must be the number one national security issue. So for all, all these other efforts will spring from that. Anyone resolute, resolutely opposing us must be crushed. All of the Crusades, absent true repentance. Crusades is another example of Christian force. If any level of government is too intransigent, stubborn, rebellious, and corrupt to transform, then, and only then, can Christians resort to shadow government or revolutionary strategy and tactics in part of constitutional rights to amend and failing that revolutionary rights to overthrow the narc. We might be there. We might be there. We might well be there. We have just suffered a, a, a terrible, squeaky, short defeat. Well, maybe. Maybe the recount will change it, but it's been, it's been, we've been feeling a lot of that here, just very recently. Okay, then we would continue to build military and geopolitical momentum until all Christian nations on earth are free of the skirt. Looks to me like the whole evil juggernaut traces back to New World Order, banksters, Marxist, fascist, socialist, UN, Satanists, a very serious rogues gallery. So many U.S. Christians have forsaken the public arena for the good life for so long that estimates run as high, and you listen to this here in Africa, estimates run as high as one-third of some key U.S. agencies being in the cannibal, pedophile, child sex trafficking, blackmail, assassination, election rigging camp. Oh, yes, and mass mind control. And godlike, arbitrary, electronic eavesdropping on the entire human race through our phones. Intel agencies in U.S. at this point are a clear and present danger to the nation and the planet. Though they, people say that there are factions of good people in there. Well, you know, if that's the case, those folks bear not the sword in vain, and they know who the freaks are, and they need to quickly round up the bad ones or be seen as in collusion with them. And only nuclear exchange could be more serious than child sex and cannibal trafficking. In U.S., a nation of 300 million, tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of children disappear yearly. So we're talking about 
you know, abortion and pedophilia as a juggernaut uh, uh, in in the government. I mean, just uh, they're really behind it. This is why it's been such a tough nut to crack here in this country. People are very naive about how deep that is. You can check on those kind of stories in alternative internet media, Breitbart, Drudge, Infowars, but they don't cover covenantal blood guilt curses like we are doing here today. It's going to be up to us Christians to share and, and, and spread this word around, okay? Because as, as good as the alternative media is on so many issues, they won't touch this one because too many people are in collusion with it. The internet was thought by elites to be a one-way tool for spying. Instead, how it's played out is that everyone, including New World Order freaks, were dragged into daylight, which is now awakening millions. So there is, there is good news. It's not all bad news. The analogy I make is when I was a young man, I lived in Minnesota, which is very forested. And when I would recreate in the forest, I couldn't see the animals, but the animals couldn't see me. Now I have moved west of there, way out onto the open plains, the least forested state in the Union. I can see the animals, but the animals can see me. That's exactly what the Internet did to the human race. That's the analogy I use for that. Anyway, instead, everyone, including New World Order freaks, were dragged into daylight, which is awakening millions. Okay, yet even alternative Internet media cannot bring itself to deal with a aside to this level that we are here today. Occasional lip service is all they'll do. In U.S., about 40% of women of childbearing age in the churches have had at least one surgical abortion, and most of the rest are on small abortion-causing chemicals. We may be doomed, okay? You know, we may not be a firewall for sub-Saharan Africa for very much longer. Millions of young people have been very badly indoctrinated in schools and colleges, they may never think their way out of it. Millions of them may never think their way out of it and will essentially be on the other side by way of indoctrination. It's very tragic. I mean, uh, I'm telling you, we may be really down to the wire on this and you need to be warned. So I am begging you, begging you, sub-Saharan African Christians, to be wise and learn from all of this. You know, a smart man learns from his mistakes and a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. I'm asking you, begging you to be wise on this, okay? And put it far from your mind, all, of the, all and, and your actions, all, you know, abortion, sodomy, birth control. Don't let them sell you on it. You know, some of your nations are in the, in the coalition with the U.S. on all this stuff. I beg you not to go there. You have, a lot of Africa has been very strong. We, you know, we people that oppose abortion, man, we look at, we look at people in Africa like they're some of our big heroes. You know, a few years ago, about, well, it was about 20 years ago now, time flies. Uh, the the uh, U.S. Episcopalian Church, which is like connected to the Anglican Church worldwide, decided they were going to have a sodomite, an openly sodomite practicing bishop. Okay, and the the African bishop came here uh, to Minneapolis where they were celebrating all that, and he and he set his face like flint against it. He was a big hero over here to people like us that were that are doing the resistance. Okay, and uh, uh, you need to understand that and and. Uh, Okay, uh, in three generations, if the way things are going, your descendants can exceed everything Europe or North America did if you stay the course against sodomy, abortion, and uh, birth control, which cause blood guilt curses on your land. I'm telling you, I'm looking. When I was in Kenya here uh, less than a year ago, it looked to me like you're all about 100 years behind us. That's a good place, but you're also starting to teeter on the edge then because we were starting to just teeter on the edge of going downhill about 100 years ago. And uh, uh, that's, so it's very important. Well, and, the, and the rate of change, they may be where we were in some ways 100 years ago, but I think, don't you think that the rate of change is not 100 year? It's no. not going to take them 100, no. you know, 100 years to make no, no, the no, change no. that it took us 100 no, no, years no, no, to no, make. No, 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 yeah. no, no. And, and uh, no, absolutely. That's a good point. Um, yeah, because everybody talks about how fast Africa is changing, you know. Um uh, for good or for ill. For yeah. good or for ill. Be very careful. I'm begging you not to go there, okay? Because you're going to be the new center of world Christendom is what it looks like to me, okay? Now, in all three generations, your descendants can exceed everything Europe or North America ever did, but eternity with Christ is, after all, the ultimate thing. You know, that's just kind of like, that's kind of God's 
common blessings on the earth. What you really want is, is for your children to, you know, inherit Christendom and go home. I, we're in deep spiritual prayer. I think we're so far gone that if, if, which is a, which is a long shot, we repent here, all we can save is, is eternal life, and we'll be, we won't be at Orchestra Hall. We'll be down the block, you know, because we're we're out of hell. But I don't know if we're gonna have huge close fellowship with God like the saints do that throw their crowns down around the throne. You know, I, I'm telling you, it's very very dire. Yeah, Rick Ellis talks about he he says this is you know for if you're Christian, this is just your holding cell. Right, that's right. This yeah, is your holding right. cell, yeah. but you know it can be more or less miserable. Yeah, that's here, right. That's, you know? that's right. Yeah, that's right. The level of evil and corruption currently being exposed from the globalist left by the conservative right is so astounding that I, for one, am becoming convinced that the much maligned, despised, rejected, and incarcerated handful of force resistance anti abortion activists in the U.S. are poised in light of rapidly unfolding revelations about wretched federal corruption to be pretty much vindicated by history at this point and certainly in the foreseeable future. Okay, these people were soldiers all on their own. Some of them did amazing exploits. You're talking about Scott Roeder. Scott Roeder. Eric Rudolph. Clayton Wagner. Yeah. Shelly Shannon. You know, these people can be written to, you know. And they're abandoned by American Christendom. American Christendom will do prison fellowship ministry with all kinds of we're talking about people who shot baby murderers yeah. to stop baby baby or, murder, or burnt down clinics, or threatened, yeah, yeah, shut them down, or did one guy didn't hurt a soul and he saved about fifty thousand lives with his tactics. Clayton Wagner, Clayton Wagner, I'm telling you, these are rip roaring American yarns. No one even lost a fingernail or a yeah. hair, and he saved about fifty thousand babies' lives with the stuff he pulled. It was unbelievably brilliant. He was a what he was was a criminal mastermind for life is, is what he was. You know? and, and it was just a, an amazing campaign anyway. Now, wouldn't it be something if the Prisoners of Christ folks, that's what they're called, they're on a list called Prisoners of Christ, got their releases bartered by a pro-life African nation or nations? And why not? They're soldiers with the same genocide enemies as Africa. I mean, why not barter for their release just like they would any other soldier? <coughs> anyway. I watched stalwart ur urban Kenyans making austere livings while laboring under profoundly devalued currency. Uh, listen, you know, get, let me, let's talk about currencies for a minute. Our currency has been deflated about 90% in 100 years, and some of the currencies in Africa are at levels of 1% of what our currency is. Uh, that's genocidal level currency uh, devaluing. Okay, and that's the banksters because they hate world Christendom. And these people are pulling it out of the tank. It's not pretty, it's not perfect, but I didn't see in the urban areas I did, of Kenya, I didn't see, you know, a lot of starvation, a lot of nakedness, a lot of disease. You know, I saw people making a go of it with, and they were doing it with free enterprise and, and, and self discipline and, and self motivation. And it wasn't perfect. Now they have an advantage with they're in a climate that's, you know, somewhat mild. So the housing costs aren't, you know, exorbitant. They don't even have to be exorbitant up here. We're halfway to the North Pole. They don't have to be exorbitant here, but they, they generally are. But what I'm getting at is that uh, God, God, that's part of the blessings that they're going through. It doesn't seem like it now. I know it can be really hard, but, you know, we're all, all of us adults are supposed to be thinking about the next generations. I was very impressed with the people struggling under, under those currencies, okay? My Liberian wife has similar stories from Monrovia. Condescending to those kind of efforts is very incorrect. Bully for them for surviving. My wife scorns the idea that you need to be prosperous to have a large family. Oh, she laughs at the scorn, okay? And that's the kind of attitude we should have as Christians. What Africa needs is clergy-led militias and posses and minimal standing in police and military. You know what? The whole world needs that. The whole world needs that. We need less standing police and military and more armed uh, posses and militias, preferably under, you know, uh, under direction from the clergy. And they got to be good clergy. Uh, 
Just like, you know, they need people determined to be self-policing Christians. That's where the freedom lies when we police ourselves. Because if we don't, there's got to be tyranny to keep the lid on. We have to self-police in our moral fiber and in our dealings with each other. You know, we, have, we have to be people of our word and people of honor and discipline and uh, diligence. You know, we just have to do that. Uh, Christians who resist New World Order banking, abortion, sodomy, and other corruption in government and social uh, society, for those are all from uh, those are all foundational to eugenics. You know, you're talking about sexual freedom and abortion and sodomy. That's 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 how they want to depopulate the world. I'm telling you, these people have a thing called the Georgia Guidestones, which is a monument to this whole agenda in Georgia, and. They're talking about, we. they've chiseled it in stone. We want to reduce world population by 90%. That's 500 million people. These people are serious. They're doing everything they can to, to wipe us out. They're, they're developing artificial intelligent robots. They're developing them to be able to have sex with people. Okay, so because they want to merge humans and robots, okay? That's the first step as far as I'm concerned. They just pass it off. Yeah, well, you know. It'll, it'll, it'll reduce prostitution and pedophilia. You know, no, they, they don't care about any of that. They like all that. What they also don't tell you is that they're artificially intelligent robots which are capable of being hacked and turned into assassins. You know? So uh, they, they've got all that. They've got that kind of technology at their command. They can, they can put robot armies in the field at this point. They can put, like I say, these little bitty drones that can follow you to your phone with facial recognition from your phone and, and zap you, and you're dead. And they can release swarms of those from these big military airplanes. We are really up against a tough nut to crack. It's not too much for God, and we can find, well, if we didn't carry cell phones around, we could eliminate a lot of that, you know, that, that threat. So in a, in a conflict situation, that would be something to take a look at. But anyway, I digress. For those are all from uh, foundational eugenics and Africans know darn well, hey, Africans know darn well that they're a targeted group for all this stuff. They need some capitalism and a lot of free enterprise to sustain themselves. A little bit of capitalism, a lot of free enterprise. Some Africans probably need to back away from socialism. But anyway, this is just the first draft of my paper. And Jonathan said, hey, let's tape it. So that's what we Twenty some odd years ago I fell and missed the moon I guess I must have reached too high I guess it was too soon For me to understand the loss That I would travel with And how my path would wander As I struggled with the myth That love is what you make it And your hope must never cease so that all the love you give away will secure a house of peace. As the harbor fog covered the ship, I strolled out for a walk. A man in black came up to me and he began to talk. He said, son, you are so far away, you must find the strength to move closer to your destiny nothing else to prove reach out and touch the future look for the open door then his image slowly faded and i saw him never more i didn't understand him i was so much younger then i didn't have the courage you expect from older men i was tired from
thought she'd see through my disguise She'd know how much I loved her And she'd read my every thought But she was too much busy thinking Of all the rules that she'd been taught When I look up at the stars And I see the depth of night I stare solemn at creation And the moon's reflected light It takes its brightness from the sun It has no power of its own And that's how I sometimes see myself A man on whom love once had shown 